Well, welcome to episode three of the next in our series on the future of learning at Faith. In the first episode, we discussed what contemporary learning is with uh, Derek Bartels at uh, Lutheran Education Queensland. And the second episode, we discussed at the timetable for 2021. Yep. And part of what we're trying to do here is create a set of systems and structures to help us as we progress into contemporary learning here at Faith into yep. the Future. In this particular um, episode, um, I have Tyson Kennedy, our Deputy Principal here, and we're going to talk about the staffing structure for next year. Um, one of the quotes that I've recently read in leadership articles is this idea that growth creates complexity and complexity kills growth. What does it mean in a school context? How, how does complexity actually get created from growth? Well, I suppose first of the, the part of the quote you're talking about, uh, growth compl creates complexity. Being here at the school, seeing it grow so quickly, I arrived in 2010, and there were challenges each year. We're growing quickly, exciting things are happening, and all of a sudden we're responding to things and putting structures in place to, I suppose, cater for the development of the school. Made sense. Uh, but then what's interesting, and we've been reviewing this this year, is putting uh, a bit of a lens on, well, how are we going here at Faith? And now knowing, wow, we've got all these structures here at our college, which makes has made sense to a degree. But all of a sudden, it's actually uh, inhibiting certain things we want to achieve as a school, which we've probably just been reflecting on a little bit as a, as a school. And it hasn't mean what we've been doing has been wrong. It's been great, actually, because we're in a great position as a school. But we're at this exciting time now, and it's quite ironic, that particular um, that quote. We're at this time now, we want to make sure that we don't have things that stop our growth. We can uh, get rid of any complexities. Mm -hmm. And you're moving to an exciting future. It's really interesting because... Obviously, we want to grow as a school, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily realise it actually creates added levels of complexity, right. which then prevents us from growing any further. So I suppose some of the things that we've looked at here is actually our leadership structure yeah. and I actually looked at it and go, are there some issues here? How can we make it better? How can we make it more simple? Because we want to speed up decision making and all those sort of things. Yeah. Don't we? Okay, so um, when we looked at this new leadership structure, yeah. there was a number of principles that we wanted to abide by while, mm. as we were creating these new roles. So I might just go through the next four of them, yeah. and I'll just ask for your opinion on those. So the first one is we wanted to make sure the leadership structure actually served the people. That's right. Well, that's what, what does that, that mean? What does that mean? What it means is we're here for the people, we're here for students, their outcomes, um, and we're obviously a community that's trying to work for our students and their interests and our, and our family's interests too. And so we need to make sure our structures are serving those people, yeah. first and foremost. And what about the staff? It's got to serve the staff as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Well, they're the ones obviously working towards, you know, helping students realise their God-given potential. So at the end of the day, we need our, our staff being supported within these structures to, to support our students. And we wanted to make sure the structure meant that communication was quick, yeah. that we could respond to decisions quickly, yeah. that people could actually make decisions without necessarily having to go up further with the chain, um, just to make everything faster. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The second one was we didn't want the leadership structure to be burdensome. And no, that right. I mean, we want there to be sufficient time. Mm -hmm. So how do we create time for our leaders? Well, it's <laughs> a few ways. Well, part of this review, and I think you've acknowledged this, Doug, we, we have an exceptional staff mm -hmm. at our school. And we want to make sure we give them time to actually uh, fulfill their roles as leaders. So we've created a structure that effectively meant that we were um, uh, reducing slightly the number of leaders that we've had and giving our staff, who are incredible, just more time to enact uh, their, these important roles. So we sort of reviewed the timetable. I'm sure that was maybe partially brought up last week. I'm not sure. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we're giving people time through our timetable so these people in these key positions now we've identified can, can do what they're, you know, uh, we know that they can and they're, they're terrific young people uh, people we're excited about. And why is time so important for leadership? time's so important for one in a practical sense but also it's time to think through those decisions and who it's going to impact because I know I've been guilty of making rash decisions and all of a sudden it can have a, a flow-on effect we want to give people the time and the opportunity to process and plan for what they're going to in fact do uh, because Working with our students and, and schools we've just discussed is complex. We want to make sure they think through uh, the possible outcomes of their decision making. Yeah, great. We, we just wanted to create white space for our leaders mm. so they had time to reflect and yeah. actually make decisions that they actually carefully consider. Yeah. Um, the next principle was we wanted to make sure the leadership structure was simple, that yeah. it was lean and it was flat. What's the purpose behind that? Well, part of that is the efficiencies, I suppose, to allow decisions to be made quickly, uh, efficiently. Um, and it also, I suppose, because 
linking to the point that our leadership people that we have in these roles, they're, they're exceptional. We want to give them the opportunity to make those decisions in that quick, mm. efficient way. And I suppose you and I, we have so much confidence in our team. Mm. We want to make them feel empowered uh, to make some decisions about where the school's going, which is really exciting. And, and one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that there were smaller numbers of direct reports. Mm. We yeah. wanted to ensure that a senior leader wouldn't have 14 direct reports yeah. because that's really difficult for that person to coach yeah, those people. Exactly. So we needed to reduce the numbers in that way. Um, the final one, and for me this is absolutely essential, is that the leadership structure must allow for the development, growth and release of future leaders. That's right. I think that's probably self-explanatory, but let's talk about that a bit. Yeah. Well, at our staff, we've got so many people who are obviously going to be in these leadership roles, but we're going to have new staff come to our school and existing staff now who perhaps see themselves one day in those leadership roles. So we want to give them support and opportunity to, to grow and develop too. Mm. And I suppose we want to make sure that, you know, in the next two, three years or whatever it is in the future, these are the people who will likely be leading our school too. So we need to invest in those people too. Yeah, that just makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so in, in your view, um, what is the role of a middle leader? Mm. What's their what's their main job? Because mm. it's not just being a manager. Yeah. Because there's a difference between management and leadership. Yeah. So what is what is the key aspects of a middle leader? Well, they've got to be able to communicate, I suppose, upwards, downwards, and in multiple ways. Mm. They're going to make sure. I suppose they're, they're they're measuring the effectiveness of what we're doing as a school because yeah. I know through our, our school leadership structure, through our governance structure, there'll be some defined strategic goals that we have. Mm. But they're the one who are on the ground and working with staff and students going, is this actually working? Mm. I suppose they're also coaching our you know, our teachers, our, our yeah, leaders yeah. as well, and making sure that uh, they're effectively uh, performing in their roles. That's right. So, um, you know, we have our strategic intents of the college, mm. and part of their role is to, to break that down into smaller, understandable pieces yeah. so that staff actually understand that. Yeah. Parents understand what we're mm. on about as well, yeah. and obviously the students too. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, on the screen, you should see the new structure yep. right now, and it looks very different. A normal leadership structure has a CEO at the top, and yep. it sort of comes down like a tree. So why have we chosen a model where it's more flat? Like, what's the purpose behind that? Well, the purpose, and I know it might sound we're repeating certain points, but I suppose uh, some of these things are key today. It's building those efficiencies, empowering people and decision-making to be just made quickly and efficiently for, for everyone involved. And I, I suppose it's either we've got this incredible group of leaders, we, we have this confidence and make it happen. And it allows everyone to understand where they can go to as well. There's just some yeah. practical elements to it as well, going what's well, simpler yeah. to go to that person or to yeah, that's get right. an outcome. And we want it to be more team-based, didn't we? We want the various different teams. We didn't want there to see this hierarchy. We just wanted people to feel like they're on the same level making and they're collaborators and they're... They're all making decisions together as a team. There's also folk, that also provides a focus for our parents and students too, so they know who to go to mm -hmm. a bit more clearly and we can direct them at times to those people. And this is just so we can support families and students with getting an outcome to any questions, concerns that they're, they're ultimately seeking from us. So we'll go through some of these positions. We won't go through all of them, but yep. we'll go through some of the key differences. So there's a new role there called Head of Leadership and Development. Yep. Um, what do you see that person responsible for? A few things, they're probably investing back in our staff, uh, uh, our middle leaders themselves, also our developing leaders, so they're, they're looking at opportunities to develop us from within. Uh, I suppose they might even have an opportunity to look at some of our student leadership and development because we're wanting to develop a, a student voice and make sure that our students actually are the ones also largely contributing to the direction of the school, but also their own growth as well along the way. What about you, what about you Doug? Well, I think that person also, like I really think that the strength of any organisation is its people, mm -hmm. and particularly in schools, the strength of it isn't in its facilities, it's in its teachers, and so we need to reinvest in our teachers yep. and in our teacher growth. So I think that's a really key aspect. Oh, the next one is the Head of School Performance and mm. Analytics. Yeah. So that's a big title. What does that actually mean? Mm. Well, I suppose like, because these roles somewhat already existed in, in other formats previously, but it's giving a person a focus role to really respond and in time as quickly as possible to go, well, how can we uh, know how we're going around certain things? And we've got different measurements to determine that uh, in a school, but they allow us point in time to know then and there how we're going. How can we make sure we respond with appropriate measures to make sure we're not just doing okay, we can do really well or great. Uh, and they're going to be a real focused role, focusing on what we're doing around performance around certain data, how we're we improving around our outcomes, and that can mean lots of different things, whether it's student learning okay. outcomes and whatever. They're going to be using this tool called the National School Improvement mm -hmm. Tool, which has about nine different domains about schools and how to improve. So that's, yeah. going to, that's a really good role there. Head of Digital Learning, yeah. it's under you. So tell me yeah. about that. What's, what's that. what's that role? Well, it's an exciting role. Um, it's a role that's uh, to support our students and also our staff with regards to their digital learning online platforms. 
But it's also making sure that digital learning isn't this thing that sits over here. It's, it's a part of school and learning uh, forever, most likely. Um, that's an exciting role that's ultimately going to be about trying to make sure that our students and staff are having effectively uh, opportunities around teaching and learning uh, in a digital space. It's also complementing what's happening in the classroom, and it's hopefully going to make it easier for students and parents at times knowing how to support their young people with uh, their learning space uh, in that area. Great. I mean, under the college pastor, um, we have a, a Christian studies coordinator, mm. but we've also got another role which is more of an outreach coordinator. Mm. So what do you see? I think the Christian studies coordinator is self-explanatory, but what yeah. about the outreach coordinator? What do you see that role about? I see that role as, I suppose, reaching uh, students, staff, community members, giving people an opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, come here to faith, experience what we're about in terms of, I suppose, our Christian ministry, mm. um, because we're obviously a missional arm of the church. And we want to give all students, whether from a strong faith background or not, an opportunity to know that they're loved, they can come here and they're welcomed here. And this person's going to be really uh, outreaching to those people to get them excited about what our school's about, maybe uh, develop a, a student in their own faith journey, perhaps, who knows? Mm. Uh, and there might be some other prospects as well, looking around uh, different opportunities to, to share the message of God. Okay, so basically there's, there's four roles at the top saying principal, deputy principal, business manager and college pastor. That forms the college executive. Yep. But then we've got another four roles, which are director yeah. roles. So we've got a director of learning communities, a director of teaching and learning, yep. a director of operations and co-curricular, and a director of marketing. Right, that's right. So all eight of those roles are the senior leadership team. Right. So um, it's a bit of a different change in title, and okay. there's some new positions there. Um, the director of learning communities. So underneath that, this is sort of the pastoral care arm of the, of the school. And under there, you see a deputy uh, director, and then you also see some head of learning communities, and it's in houses. So we've actually gone from uh, 16 different roles there. We've, we had um, two year level coordinators, a yeah. male and female, per, right. per year level, and, and four house coordinators. Yeah. And we've reduced that down to five roles. So somebody might look at that and go, that seems like a huge reduction. Yeah. Is it? No, I'd actually disagree with that. What it is, is these people are actually getting a significant amount of time to actually plan, prepare, and ensure they're actually building communities within those house structures. The year level program certainly worked uh, for a period of time and actually makes a bit of sense, absolutely. But I suppose what we noticed with our year level programs, quite often they were reacting to maybe an incident, an event or whatever, certainly trying to build a program, no doubt. But we just feel within our house structure model, it could be really about investing in communities and trying to build that spirit within each house structure. And the couple that you mentioned uh, around uh, the learning community side of things, we want to make sure that that's a bridge between academics and pastoral care. And they need to be one and the same and together. Yeah. So we really see this uh, this new structure allowing that to happen. Our community's developing. It's just really exciting. Oh yeah, it's all about community building for me. Sorry. Um, on the, then we go to the Director of Teaching and Learning, and yep. we see a Head of Learning Community as well there, but it's an, under a more of a curriculum focus. Yep. We use the same title for the pastoral leaders and the curriculum leaders. Why did we do that? We want them to see themselves as, uh, I suppose, and that's not curriculum over here, pastoral here are saying, you know, we want to make sure that they can work a lot more closely together at times, because as a teacher in our school, uh, they're also, uh, they need to be pastoral. Mm. <laughs> you can't just focus on, on doing the academics now and the pastoral over here. They, they, they need to be together, and we feel like having those particular roles defined and, and I suppose, uh, term that way will hopefully allow our staff our students and families to realise the importance of them uh, coming together. What's really exciting is those two roles, the, the 10 people all together, will actually be in the same office area. Correct. And so they'll be collaborating together. Absolutely. I think that's really exciting. So um, then we've got the Director of Operations and Co-Curricular, yeah. which is a new role. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a Head of Sport there. That's essentially the same as what we've had. That's right. It? That's correct. Well, there's a lot of things that's not changing, I suppose. There's yeah. some structures that are staying the same, but certainly around that, our Director of Operations and Co-Curricular. That's an exciting role because we have so many great things that happen here at Faith beyond the curriculum. We want to make sure that those things are adding up to really complement everything we do out of our curriculum. They make sense as well, uh, but we will just continue to go from strength to strength in that area, particularly with that role supporting it. Yeah, and then we've got a Director of Marketing, a new yeah. role for us, which I think is really important. It's really important that we have the front face of what we're doing here and communicating to our parent body, right. but not just our existing parents, but to the wider community. Exactly right. That, yeah. That's very much what it's about. And that also, that role is going to allow us to hear from those people as well. So we can uh, make sure that you understand what we're about, but also we can understand what the needs of our community current and future are. Yeah, really exciting. So they're the new roles. Mm. So, um, so a final question. How does this new structure support the college moving forward into this new space of contemporary learning? 
well, it does it in a multitude of ways. Uh, I suppose the structures we've started to talk about, it'll hopefully develop a, a de-siloing of subjects. So it's not like I'm just doing maths here, I'm doing science there. Hopefully there'll be an opportunity for more true transdisciplinary learning. And that's not just uh, you need to just year seven. I know there's been a, a period of time that we've been doing that, but I suppose allowing, I suppose people, teachers, students, not just to see as I'm doing year seven maths, year eight maths, whatever. It's providing, I suppose, those learning communities where students can really potentially transition and move between learning uh, at any grade or whatever it is, based on who they are, that uniqueness. And I think that's what this new structure is going to allow us to tailor right. their learning to each individual. So we went from like 14 curriculum leaders mm. to five. Yep. And again, similarly, an increase in time release yep. for that. But we're not going to have a head of maths and a head of science and a head of humanities anymore. They're going to be curriculum leaders. So we've made an intentional effort to de silo departments, that's as right. you said. So I think that's really exciting. Um, what else? What else does it allow us to do? Well, I suppose it's, it's going to put our focus around well, the quality of teaching and learning. Uh, those people that are going to be uh, leading in that space, their focus, and yeah, there's going to be certain things we have to do around from a curriculum standpoint around certain subject areas, sure, but they're going to be looking for opportunities where they can be joined together subjects. Uh, they want to make sure they're working with our staff to support them to make sure that the teaching and learning is of a terrific standard. So it's giving students the best learning opportunities. So they're going to be coaching, supporting our staff. It's just a really exciting time. It really is. And finally, what I'd like to say is I think this new structure allows us to push deeper into the organisation, the decision making, mm. empowering our staff to make decisions, trusting our staff mm. and giving them permission to fail. I think all these things yep. are really, really important moving the college into the future. So thanks right. Tyson for that. Appreciate um, that. The next episode um, will be with Pastor Luke where we'll be talking about Christian ministry and what we're going to be, we're intending on doing next year. So again, thank you. Awesome.